Hello and welcome to Financial Foundations, an e-learning course on personal finance by the advisors at Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. I am the host of the Wise Money Show, also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group, part of a team of CFPs that all work together. And we're going to be coming to you over the next several weeks with some financial principles. Now, over the past several years, um, oftentimes we are asked by different members of the community, whether it's businesses or universities, we've even been asked by the, the uh, football team at Notre Dame to come in and speak about wise financial principles. And we always love that opportunity because we get to see all sorts of people with their personal financial planning, seeing the results and helping them with strategies. We just love the opportunity to speak to a group of people about wise financial habits. So in the midst of all this chaos in 2020, there's been sort of two things that have been colliding. Number one is that schools and universities, even businesses, have shifted temporarily from sort of in-person or in-classroom learnings, and they've shifted to e-learning or virtual learning. At the same time, because of this economic crisis and health crisis, there's been a financial crisis that has really caused many people to look at their own financial situation with a new lens. And so we're trying to blend those two things together right now and provide you with an e-learning course on personal finance to help you wherever you are in your financial journey with foundational tools and skills to help you improve your overall financial situation. So whether you're in college or in high school or just getting started in your financial life and you're looking for some Oh, some principles and skills to adapt to help you from, uh, really, from day one, hit the ground running, making good financial choices. Or if you're further along in your financial journey and you're just looking to hone some skills, hopefully this session and the next four, over the next five weeks or so, will help you get that foundation in your finances. So myself and a couple other of the certified financial planners here at Corhorn Financial Group, we're excited to bring you a few different skills and recommendations and some encouragement to help you take your next wise step in your financial life. Uh, every session, we're going to try to make palatable, maybe 15, 20 minutes or so. Always actionable, though, leaving you not only with some instruction, some skills, but some encouragement as far as to take your next wise step and, and apply some of the material. One last thing before we get into today's brief lesson is I want to tell you that myself and all of the advisors here, we view everyone's financial life as an integrated connection of six different financial areas. There's six areas to everyone's financial life. And I wanted to give you that backdrop because you can't talk about one area without thinking of how it's going to impact all the others, okay? So even though we may talk about one principle or one issue each week, they're all connected, okay? A lot of these principles, because they're foundational, we're going to be talking about your present financial position, which is the first area. The second area is protection planning, so looking at the big financial risks and how you manage them. The third area is tax planning, proactively looking at what tax opportunities are available to you and figuring out which opportunities you should go after and which ones you should pass on. Fourth is investments. We're definitely going to talk about that, investment planning. College and retirement planning, that's the fifth area. And then lastly, the sixth area is estate planning. You can't make a great decision in your financial life without understanding how, how that decision is going to impact all six areas. Lots of good choices out there, but the great ones are the ones that bring synergy to those six areas. So like I said, over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about different financial principles, foundational principles that touch on many of those areas, maybe mostly in present financial position or investing or retirement, but it's going to be, it's important that you understand that the decisions you make need to be connected and bring synergy to all six areas of your financial life. All right, so let's get started. If I were to ask you, what's the number one phrase that is said by clients in their very first financial planning meeting or maybe their second financial planning meeting, what would you think it is? The truth is, like, it's not even close. There's no close second. By far, the most common phrase that is said in the very first meeting or maybe the second is, I wish I would have gotten started sooner. I wish I would have started earlier. So basically, we can peel the, that saying back a little bit. They're 
they're sitting there at that moment at their whatever their financial reality is at that time and thinking, gosh, I feel like I should be further along. If I would have started earlier, I'd have been further along. Well, the truth is, you're never younger than you are right now. Today is the earliest moment that you've got to work with. So, 20 years from now, do you want to say that phrase? Do you, do you want to be able to say, gosh, I wish I'd have started earlier? Or can you do something about it right now? So humor me for just a second. Close your eyes, if you will, or whatever, but imagine life 20 years from now. Right, right now, 20 years from now, what would you be doing? What are you spending your time on? This very moment, 20 years from now, are you at work? Are you retired? What are you spending your time on? Who are you talking to? What are you doing? Financially, what does life look like? Is there peace financially or is there stress? Within your cash flow, is there margin in your financial life? Or are you more paycheck to paycheck? Do you have a lot of money saved up? Or maybe do you have a lot of regrets about time missed? Truth is, you've got a choice today to carve out and architect what life's going to look like financially 20 years from now. And if I can just go into that a little bit more in depth, what you're, what, what that person who's saying, gosh, I wish I would have started earlier, or if you were really getting into the moment and thinking of what life's going to look like in 20 years, what you're thinking about are the wide range of, of future results. Whether those are good results or great results or mediocre or bad results, you're thinking of results. And oftentimes, as we get the opportunity to speak to groups of people, especially younger, younger folks, oftentimes they say they're thinking of results. I want to have this financial result. I want to have a lot of money. I want to have this sort of impact or whatever. But they're thinking of the results. The truth is the results are like, are, are like the end of a funnel, okay? Those results are fed, they're derived by something that comes before them. And that's what I want to focus on today. Your results come from your behaviors. Your behaviors drive your results. That's exactly where that phrase comes from. I wish I would have gotten started sooner. I wish I'd have had behaviors long ago that led to results that I want to have right now. Does that make sense? So your behaviors drive your results, which is why today's lesson is more about your behaviors, your habits, because that's what's going to drive the financial result that you want. That's the foundational financial principle that's going to drive the results. And by behaviors, it's not just these once-in-a-lifetime behaviors or the one-event sort of behaviors. Really, what determines your results are the things that you repeatedly do. It's your habits, and specifically your financial habits. So in just a moment, I'm going to make it real tangible. I'm going to deliver some, some potential financial habits that I would hope that you'd emotionally commit to. But if you'll let me digress for just, just a little bit longer, your behaviors drive your results, but that's actually not the beginning of the funnel. Your behaviors actually come out of your beliefs come out of your thinking. Your beliefs drive your behaviors and those behaviors then drive the results that you're going to achieve. Oftentimes, if you look at the media or you listen to people, they're frustrated or complaining or possibly bragging about their results. No, those results, we, there's consequences to all of our decisions. Those results come from our behaviors, those behaviors come from our thinking, come from our beliefs. So, if I can inject a little bit into your thinking, a little bit into your beliefs, is that your financial results don't come from how much money you make. It comes from how much you've saved. It comes from your habits. Your financial results come from having great habits applied consistently over time. It's not winning the lottery. It's not making a whole bunch of money. It's not finding the next uh, Amazon or Apple stock and you buy in early and you make all this money. That's not how true financial success, these good or great results actually happen. It happens in you know, one out of two million cases, 
but that's not how it typically happens. How do I know this? Decades of experience. Thousands of, t uh, of people that we've served and looked into their financial situation and how they got to where they are. But not only that, there's research that backs that up too. The average millionaire takes them about 30 years to become a millionaire. Not that that's you know, a measure of, of financial success, but it is a measure, something objective. And, um, and so it takes time. So your belief should be, I've got to apply the right behaviors in order to get the right result. You know this as a simple principle called cause and effect. And so often, sorry for the terrible penmanship there, so often as we're meeting with clients and they say, hey, my son or daughter is just graduating college, can you talk to them about finances? Or um, even, you know, the coaches at, at, uh, at Notre Dame said, hey, can you come in and talk to the guys, the football team about about finances and so on. So often, those folks that sort of have that request, they're interested in the results. Hey, can you talk about the results? Can you talk about the results? And, and that might be what you're thinking as well with this financial foundations course. But it really starts with having the right behaviors and the right beliefs. What are the things that cause those right uh, results, those, those effects, all right? Does that make sense? So work on your thinking, get the right behaviors, that will lead to the right results. Now, over the next four weeks, we're going to be helping you with some of these behaviors. We're going to be applying, giving you some skills, some very practical instruction so that you can apply the right behaviors to get the right long-term results. But to leave you with something tangible today, I'd like to, even just before going into those specific instructions that we're going to do over the next few weeks, I'd like to just offer a few of the most important financial habits that I've seen lead people to financial success. And if you will, just emotionally, write these down and emotionally just commit to them wherever you're at right now, okay? So what are, with you know a couple decades of experience in serving individuals and small businesses, what are just a couple of the most important financial habits that I'd encourage you to adopt? Well, the very first one is spend less than you make. Guys, it really is that simple. It, it really is. If you want to have money someday in the future, you've got to spend less than you earn. Oftentimes people say, well, in order to have financial success or over, in order to have money out there in the future, I just need to make a ton or I need to win the lottery or something like that. No, the truth is it's that simple. You just need to make something and spend less than that. That's how you have money out there in the future. It really is that simple. If I were to ask you, hey, could you ever get in financial trouble out there in the future by spending less than you make? No, actually no, no. So, so this is it, spend less than you make. We're actually gonna get into some specific instructions and equip you on how to do this really well budgeting and three bank account system with Amy Masters CFP next week. So first habit, just make it a habit. Spend less than you make. Second, save. Well, if you spend less than you make, what do you do with the difference? Save. Save for the future. Invest for the future. We're going to talk, uh, CFP, one of my colleagues, Josh Gregory, is going to talk about investing here in a couple weeks. That is kind of glitz and glamorous. But before you even get into all the principles with investing, you just have to have a habit of saving. Be a net saver. Make that a habit to be saving. And when I was in college and just getting out of school, before I was even investing, I was saving, just saving into a bank account. So make it a habit. Make it a habit to save. The third habit. What's your posture with interest? Are you paying interest or are you earning interest? Make it a habit to earn interest, not pay interest. Throughout your life, at some point, I'm sure you will borrow money, okay? Whether it's to buy your first house or your second house or your third house, maybe you borrowed money to go to school and, and, uh, and, and equip your brain with some human capital to go trade that for money. So likely at some point you're going to borrow. So I'm not telling you never borrow ever, but have the right posture. You want to be earning interest, not paying interest, 
okay? We're gonna talk about credit and credit cards. We're gonna talk about the right posture towards debt as well during this financial foundations course. But if I could give you a habit, as it relates to interest, earn interest, don't pay interest. Fourth, set goals. Set financial goals. This is something that I'd encourage you to do and make it a habit every single year. These aren't resolutions, these are actually goals, written goals, write them down. Um, this is something that I still do every single year in my life, sometime between the week of, between Christmas and New Year's. I write down, or I sit down with my wife and we write out our financial goals. We wanna save this much for the future. We wanna save this much in cash for certain projects. We wanna pay down debt in this way or whatever it is. Set financial goals. Very, very, very rarely does someone wake up way out there in the future, decades and decades from now, and have financial success by accident. Normally it takes being intentional, writing goals, and setting and achieving those goals, okay? So make it a habit to set goals. And then finally, get a coach. And I am, I'm a financial coach. Our advisors here are financial coaches. So this is a biased opinion. Of course it is. However, if you just watched uh, The Last Dance, right? Michael Jordan, the very best basketball player ever, the GOAT, if you will, had a coach, right? He had a coach. All of us need an objective third party who can see things we can't see, who maybe have skills we don't have, and can help coach us and give us creative and, and, and uh, different sorts of ideas, different things to go after and accomplish. So they help strategize, they help bring creativity, they help push you farther than you normally would think about going. In this day and age with technology, in regards to the six areas of your financial life, there's a lot of temptation to just think, well, here, I'll just do this online and I'll bank online and I'll get a mortgage online and I'll get my insurance online. And that's all great. I mean, I'm, I'm good with that. Make it real convenient, make it really cheap. But again, someone's got to bring all six areas of your financial life together and help you make great decisions. Your coach, your certified financial planner is the one that's kind of bringing all of these things together and all the other principles and helping you reach your long-term goals, kind of bringing, synthesizing all six areas of your financial life, helping you make great decisions. So I'd encourage you right now, get in the habit of having a great financial coach, great financial professionals surrounding you, helping you with your next wise step. So, all right. So that's session one, lesson one on financial foundations, all about having the right financial habits. And I know it feels a little squishy, not as tangible, but I would tell you right now, if if you're thinking about, well, how can I have the right financial foundation to achieve great long-term financial success? It's your habits. It's your habits. We got to start there. So we're going to get into more specific application next week and the following. So, um, so be sure to join us for that. Your homework today, your action item today. I go back to this list. Hopefully you're, you're, you're taking notes, but I would tell you if you haven't set financial goals between now and next week's class, set some financial goals, write them down. And if you don't even know where to start, then I would just set a goal for this course, this e-learning course. What would you hope to learn financially? Or maybe write out 20 years from now. What do you want your finances to look like? Write down some goals before next week's class and come back ready to learn about budgets and three bank account system. All right, that's it for today. Thanks everyone.